welcome back in the first two lessons on the test of English we talked about the first five types of errors namely concord error tense error errors in the use of articles inversion errors and question tag errors now in this third lesson we are going to talk about the remaining two types of errors namely the errors in the use of prepositions and the other types of errors the first one is the types of errors that are normally committed in the use of prepositions at the end of this session you'll be able to know the various types of errors in the use of prepositions and the other types of errors now what is a preposition the very name suggests pre position a preposition is a word which normally occurs before a singular noun sita returned from the school here the preposition is the word from it comes just before the noun school so a preposition normally occurs before a noun and it tells us about the relation the person has uh, with reference to something else there are three types of prepositions simple prepositions like at by for of in etc compound prepositions which are prefixed to a noun adjective or adverb like across against amongst etc and phrase prepositions which are in fact a group of words in place of a single preposition in place of in addition to on account of etc now we are going to learn about the correct use of prepositions particularly about some six or seven types of prepositions in the use of which we are confused very often the first one is the correct use of the three prepositions between among and amongst the first one is between as you know pretty well that between is used when two things or two persons are mentioned or compared in a sentence when more than two things or more than three persons more than two persons are compared or mentioned in the sentence you should not use between but among but then there is a third preposition called amongst which is also used for more than two persons or things but only when the next word starts with a vowel sound between among and amongst let us see some examples now the property was divided between the two sons here the talk of two sons therefore we use between there was some misunderstanding among the players of the team this sentence indicates that the players the number is more than two now the third sentence there is no misunderstanding amongst us referring to us here standing for more than two persons if there are only two persons here the third sentence you should not use amongst but you must use only between so among is used when you talk of more than two things or more than two persons mentioned or compared amongst is also used when you talk of or mention more than two persons or things only when the next word starts with a vowel sound the second concept we talk about the distinction between the use of in and at in is mostly used with the names of cities towns and villages in is used when we talk about a place as an area whereas at is used when we see it as a, a point now the examples to this effect are we stayed in mumbai for five days in mumbai it is looked at as a place he was born in at kashipur in uttar pradesh there are two places mentioned here kashipur is a smaller place 
when compared to Uttar Pradesh. Therefore, we use at for Kashipur and in for Uttar Pradesh. Our plane stopped at Hyderabad on the way to Goa. The plane is on its way to Goa. It stopped at Hyderabad. Here you don't refer to the city of Hyderabad to the airport. A point in Hyderabad. Therefore, you are using at. Our plane stopped at Hyderabad on the way to Goa. At is used for a point of time and in for a period of time. I shall meet you at 6 o'clock in the evening. Evening you are using in. That means a period of time. It may be from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Whereas at 6 o'clock a point of time. Now the next one is since and far. Many of us get confused when to use sin and since and when to use far. Now since is used when you talk of a point of time. It has been raining since 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock is a point of time. When you talk about a period of time, it has been raining for 3 hours. Here 3 hours is a period of time. Therefore, we use for. Now the next set of prepositions is on and upon. Both are prepositions. When to use on, when to use upon. On is used when you think of a place as a surface of something at rest. If that thing you are talking about is moving in relation, then you will use upon. Let's look at the example. The books are lying on the table. The table is at rest. Now, the jackal jumped upon the camel's back. Maybe the camel is moving and in motion, the jackal jumped upon the camel's back. Now, two other important prepositions that are confusing normally. They are beside and besides. Many of us do not know the difference. Now, the word beside means by the side of. My house is beside the railway station. Now, besides means in addition to or moreover. He sat beside her all night. He sat by her side. Now, I have got no family besides my parents. Means only my parents or my family. In addition to them, I have no other family. That is the difference between beside and besides. Now, use of the preposition and by and with. Now, by refers to the doer or agent, one who acts. And with refers to the instrument. He was stabbed by his enemy with a dagger. Now, dagger is the instrument. Therefore, we use with. By is the person, the stabber. He was stabbed by his enemy. Enemy is the agent and dagger is the instrument. For instrument, we use with. And for the agent, we use by. Similarly, till and by. Till means up to. I'll wait for you. I shall wait for you till 5 p.m. Means not later than 5 p.m. Now, I shall be back by 7 o'clock. Means not later than 7 o'clock. Between by and till. Now, the other set over, above, under and below. Over is the antonym of under. It implies the relation of height in position or space. Above is the antonym of below. It shows resting in a higher position. Example, the sky is over our head. The bullocks are tethered under the tree. His head is above water. He is below me in the class. Now, there are some specific prepositions for specific words. It is better that you remember the association between some verbs and prepositions. <coughs> that would help you to solve questions on prepositions. Famous for. Fond of. He is very fond of milk sweets. Apprised of. 
apprised of means informed he is a fry apprised of the actual stock position teeming with means busy with people it is teeming with the buyers liable to you are liable to be punished prefer to this very often we get confused he prefers coffee than tea it is wrong prefer is always followed by the preposition to he prefers coffee to tea he prefers football to cricket adapted to confined to acquainted with different from cure for freedom from anxious about walk along walk along a particular road on the stage or veranda see through laugh at objection to short off plying which means moving up and down to and fro plying on the road suffer from always you suffer from a disease now died of when a person dies of a disease you say he died of cholera but when a person is involved in an accident and dies he died in an accident not died of an accident these verbs take particular prepositions it is better for you to remember this association so that when you are asked to choose the correct preposition <coughs> the answer comes automatically to you then one more important thing about prepositions is we very often use unwanted prepositions prepositions which are not required after all english is not our mother tongue not even our father's tongue it doesn't mean that we can use prepositions as we like very often without knowing we use prepositions that are not required earlier in lesson 1 we saw my daughter cannot cope up with the syllabus here up is an unwanted preposition the sentence is correct without up you cannot shirk from work you just shirk work he resembles with my elder brother wrong he resembles my elder brother no preposition is required he get through i will get through in the examination it is wrong i'll get through the examination enter the hall not enter into the hall he was told <coughs> not told to return itself means back so you don't say he returned back from uh, mumbai cope up then pass in the examination or pass the examination is correct investigate the matter accompany with i will accompany you not i will accompany with you now discuss this is very often uh, misused or wrongly used we shall now discuss about elections the correction is we shall discuss elections my uncle has rebuilt his house again rebuild itself means again retreat back retreat means coming back therefore use of unwanted prepositions there are prepositions in case of interrogative or relative pronouns though prepositions are normally placed before nouns as i told you the very name suggests prepositions but there are occasions when the prepositions come later not before the noun they follow the object when it is an interrogative pronoun or a relative pronoun look at the examples here is the pen that you were looking for now here far comes later because that is the object now what are you driving at now at is the preposition because it is given at the end it is interrogative pronoun what is the interrogative pronoun similarly which of the chairs did you sit on here again the preposition on comes later because the interrogative pronoun which now after this we have seen a set of rules for the correct use of prepositions